Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. When it comes to heavy duty luxury trucks, we have two of the nicest and most expensive here with us today. That is the Ford F-250 Limited, and that is the GMC Sierra 2500 Denali Ultimate. And we're gonna compare them, we're gonna load them up with payload and see which one is better. Let's jump right into the numbers now, and we're gonna start with pricing. But first, let's rewind just a little bit because this is actually a bit of a rematch. We had this exact Ford F-250 Limited already here on the channel, and we compared it to a Chevy 2500 High Country. Now, many people pointed out, and rightfully so, that the Ford just has more options, more content than that Chevy can even get, and the prices reflected that. This Ford was about $10,000 more expensive than the Chevy was, and spoiler alert, I did pick the Chevy in that comparison almost exclusively because of the price, because it just didn't feel like there was that much more built into this Ford. But yes, that wasn't perfect apples to apples, but we've corrected that today with this GMC, because in the General Motors lineup, if you want the pinnacle of luxury these days, you have to go to GMC to get it, and specifically you need a Denali Ultimate. So now let's talk about the price tags we have here. Over here on the GMC, $127,000 Canadian. Over here on our Ford, $124,000. So in this case, the GM is a hair more expensive, but these things are basically right there on an even level, and that's gonna make for an interesting comparison. And now, let's dive into the engine. So what is General Motors bringing to the table? This is a 6.6 .6 liter V8 diesel. It's making 470 horsepower, 975 pound-feet of torque, and that is sent through a 10-speed automatic. Jump over here to the Ford, and the numbers do get bigger. This is the 6.7 liter high output diesel, also sending its power through a 10-speed automatic. And how much power? 500 horsepower and 1,200 pound-feet of torque. So yes, the numbers are bigger here on the Ford. And you know what? Today, we are gonna load up 2,000 pounds of payload into the beds of both of these trucks to see how those numbers translate actually out there on the road doing some real work. We have more numbers to get to, but we do have to mention the styling on both of these trucks. They are revised, both of them recently in the way that they look. I think that the Ford is a little less polarizing. It's a little more of a familial look. It looks like the F-150 has looked for many, many years. Now, because this is the Limited, you're getting that unique grill with all the chrome, but then you're also getting body color bumpers, little mirror caps up there that are body color. So they kind of blend that body color with some of the chrome. Even the tow hooks down there are chrome too. And then over here on the GMC, we have what's called Vader Chrome. And yes, that is named for Darth Vader. All those long days on the Death Star, this is what he was showing up to work in. The Vader Chrome does look nice, even on a darkly painted color. It's sort of that even darker, deeper look. I will also say this is more of a polarizing look to my eye. The GM is really aggressive, really in your face. I do, I think, lean towards the GMC when it comes to styling, but that's just my eyeballs. Why don't you jump in the comments right now and just straight up tell me which one of these two trucks looks better. Let's discuss the business end of these pickup trucks now. And I wanted to start up here because both of these trucks have these little side steps just beyond your cab. And that's because these trucks are so tall now. So to get up into the bed, you literally do need that step. I mean, look, I stand at six foot two and this bed is chest height with me. So I do like that manufacturers are recognizing they're getting so tall, you need steps back there too. Now, General Motors has our Classic bumper step. This is something they've been doing for quite a while. It's a great idea because it's always there and always ready to go. Nothing needs to be folded or moved out of the way, and I like that. Now, the other thing we have here, of course, is the Multi Pro tailgate. So, this is a tailgate in a tailgate. There's two buttons here. 
one for the little gate and then one for the big gate. You know what? I did that order backwards. I got to do the big one, then the little one. There they go. And this has a bunch of different uses. One of the biggest ones is the fact that it's just a massive step down here. And yes, you might also notice this one has the optional kicker stereo in it, so you can hook up your Bluetooth and while you're tailgating, I guess, crank your tunes. But I just like that it's a really big, wide step, easy to use and easy to get up into this bed. Now that I'm up here, I'll point out a few of the features in the back of the bed. First of all, LED lighting. Again, pretty standard these days, but it is here on both of these trucks. Now I do have a plug in this bed. It's right over here. It's only 400 watts in the GM. They haven't stepped up to a big power like over there in the Ford. So that's definitely a point in the Ford's favor. One point in the GM's favor though, three fixed tie downs in every corner of this bed. And to me, that is a big deal. It really does help when you're trying to secure different things at different levels. So one other thing I'll show off real quick, because it's something that I've actually used. One of the functions I really like on this tailgate is just this right here. It's a load stopper. If you are hauling some wood or something that comes beyond the level of your gate, so you need it down, this adds extra security to make sure things aren't gonna roll out the back of your truck. So just another one of the functions that I actually find myself using. Now let's look at the F-250 and yes, you'll notice bumper steps. Where did they get that idea from? General Motors. GM was first, Ford has copied them. That's totally okay because if it's a good idea, it should be copied and those work really, really well. So now we drop this tailgate. One thing I'll point out that Ford has done, they've added a backup camera into the lip of their tailgate. Why? So when the tailgate is down, you still have a reverse camera. And then of course, we have Ford's bed step, which again has been around. It's actually in its second generation. The design changed from the original iteration, but this step works great because it tucks totally up out of the way. And then when it's down, I feel like it's one of the lowest steps on the market. So the step in is even easier, just a hair, than even over there in that GM. Now I get back in here, I can show you some of the features. Uh, we also have LED lights. They're actually operated by a rubberized button right there. We have our hookups here for a fifth wheel travel trailer or any type of fifth wheel or gooseneck trailer. And then a really important feature, pro power on board, a bank of plugs. And this offers two kilowatts of power. So way more power than over there in the GM. And you might've noticed as well, there's one little discrepancy in this video. It's the fact that the Ford has an eight foot bed. This is a proper long bed where the GM there is just a six foot 10, I believe bed. So yes, the Ford is longer, but that's just the spec difference in this case. And then as we come around the side, I'll show you two other things. The first one is right here. I really like these on the tailgate. These are tie downs. So again, if you have lumber that comes to the end of your gate, you can tie it down. Heck, even a snowmobile or ATV that needs the gate down, you can use those as well. So I appreciate having those. And then back at the sides, another set of steps. And just like the GM allows me to get in here and actually access my stuff. So there's so many features on the beds of pickup trucks these days. And every year they just keep getting smarter. I don't think I could choose one bed over the other because all the features are a little varied, but I just want to drive that point home that for doing real work, there's so many useful things on both of these trucks. Let's talk towing and payload now. And once again, we come back to my favorite sticker in the industry. It's right down here. It tells us the exact towing and payload for this truck. It's VIN specific and I appreciate that. So payload on this truck, 2,984 pounds. And then when it comes to max conventional towing, you're talking about 18,500 pounds and gooseneck and fifth wheel is 19,100 pounds. Let's go see how the Ford compares. Now let's look at the Ford and no, it's not as convenient as the GM. Ford, you have to go look at their towing charts, work out your wheelbase, your engine, all of that stuff, and then find your numbers. However, payload is always right here on your door jam. So payload number here, 2,966 pounds. So just a little bit less than the GM. Conventional towing on this Ford as it sits, 22,000 pounds. So when it does come to towing, the Ford does take it. Before we take off, let's look at the camera system first here in the GMC. So we'll go ahead and put it into reverse. And that's your first view. You get the top down plus the rear, but we can go through all the views now. So there's your nose camera in the top down, looking straight down at the bed. 
That can be handy hooking up a trailer or parking next to something. They're straight down at your nose. That's looking forward at your front tires. Again, especially for parking, these things are really handy or maneuvering through a parking lot. That's looking back at your rear tires. There's your zoomed in hitch view for when you are hooking up a trailer. And you also have a Chimsel camera looking down into your bed. Plus you can even zoom it in. And this view specifically is for hooking up a fifth wheel trailer or a gooseneck trailer. So you can line up that hitch as well. So yeah, just so many different camera views these days that we get in these trucks. And you can even remove the double view and just use the whole screen for one view as well. So nice cameras here in the GM. We can see how they compare to the Ford right now. Now let's see the cameras here in the Ford. So I'll put it in reverse and you get the same view, the rear and the top down. It's funny that on this truck, they reversed the sides of the screen that they use, just one little difference. Now one thing I like on the Ford over here is you can actually zoom in on each specific corner that you want to on the rear, on that corner. Once again, if you're maneuvering in tight quarters, those views can be really handy. So now over here, we can open this up. Again, there's your top down. There's your Chimsel camera looking into your bed. And just like the Chevy, you can zoom that in too. So if you're hooking up a gooseneck, that is nice to have. There's your wide rear view, specific hitch camera, another wide rear. This is for your trailer camera. So if you get it, you can hook up an extra camera on the back of your trailer is most common. You could even hook it up in inside your trailer if you really wanted to. And then there's the trailer reverse guidance system, which we are not going to use today. One other thing I will show you though, the truck has to be in park to do this, is we'll go to our rear camera and I'm gonna open the tailgate, which I can do from a button. There it goes. And there's our secondary view. Oh, look, and Sasquatch is over there in the woods right there. I spotted him. But this is the, that secondary camera back there. And when you drop your tailgate, you don't lose the view, which is pretty cool. And it even reminds you that the area under the tailgate is not visible. And then if I hit my button again and put the gate back up, it'll just automatically switch to that other camera. So uh, that is a handy feature. And I think in the battle of the cameras, the Ford might have the edge by just a little bit, but both of these systems really do show you all around your truck. Folks, now we're out here on the road in the F-250. High output diesel, 1,200 pound feet with our 2,000 pound block in the bed around the corner and I'm gonna punch it, let's feel it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And there's 80 kilometers and there's 100. That's ridiculous. The power here is just, comes on so strong, so low, so smooth. It's hard to argue with the power, right? It's so good, I'd drive around with 2,000 pounds in my bed all the time. Yeah, man, maybe that's the most important part. It's like you put a big block back there. I didn't feel like I was digging that much harder into the pedal. I didn't really have to floor it to get that power. So, yeah, you're almost driving it like, you know, quote unquote normal, which is, you know, is to say that the power is so good that you don't even notice the weight. Well, the other thing is that it smooths out the ride, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And of course, this is, you know, the case across the board, but you feel that right away. You just lose all of that chatter out of the back end. But on the flip side, it's not too floaty. You don't get too much of that bounce. You get kind of one or two good bounce backs, and then the weight is controlled. Yeah. So, yeah, the suspension is doing exactly what you want it to. And we're probably not over payload, but we're probably close to it with the block and then the three of us up here. Well, if we had lunch, we would. <laughs> yeah, but then based on that too you know the, the payload rating it feels like you could probably go even more and be fine and even the positioning of the block because this is an eight foot bed and we loaded it with our backhoe we could only get the block so far forward i'd prefer it to be another foot forward and we couldn't quite get it there so with that positioning it should even more so be working the truck and that i don't feel any rise out of the nose at all that's another thing you kind of look for is light steering and a rise in the nose i feel like it's still sitting dead flat it is i looked at it and that was the first thing I wanted to see after I dropped the block on it and it's got a very flat attitude and it's and it feels absolutely flat here on the road 
Totally. And I think, again, this is the general comment, but I do want to put it out there because we get a lot of questions about half ton versus heavy duty. What's really the difference? This is one of those big differences. If you're doing heavy work, and I consider 2,000 pounds pretty heavy work, mm -hmm. an HD just does it effortlessly. Whereas a half ton would carry this block, likely would be over payload, but you would feel it back there. And, and that's where that, that difference really comes in when you step up to the heavier truck. Well, let me add one other thing. 2,000 pounds sitting where it's sitting in the bed would translate to roughly uh, somewhere about a 17,000 pound fifth wheel. Mm. That's, how much, that's how much weight it would transmit to the truck. Sure. So this gives you a sense if you had that big a trailer, and that's anyway. usually, that'd be like about a 38 foot trailer. Sure. Okay. And how that would feel. And I mean, first off, it's uh, dead solid. Yeah. And with this amount of power, you know that it would haul 17,000 odd pounds. No problem. So, so, you know, if you're into the HD, you're doing heavy work, and the, the, the takeaway has to be that the Ford's going to do a good job. Now, we do have to get into some details on a lot of the features here, because that's where these trucks are going to set themselves apart. I don't think the overall feel is going to be massively different, but it's in how a lot of these systems work. So the first thing we can look at is the mirrors. Very similar between the two trucks. They're both powered. So these are powered out and powered in, which is nice. Now, the one thing I wish most companies would catch up on, they're also power folding, is I wish the spot mirrors, the convex mirrors, were powered as well. That's not something you get anywhere but Ram. And I don't know why these brands haven't done that. So that's one thing I would like to see. Um, but the mirrors themselves are big and they do give you a, a really good line of sight. You can see everything. One way the Ford though, one feature I should say the Ford hat doesn't have that the GMC does is a rear camera mirror. We just have an old school mirror here, dad. And of course this works fine. We're totally used to it. But at this price point, I do feel like that's a knock against the Ford. It's just one more system you could have in place to help with safety. And I, and I do think it helps with safety if you happen to be blocking this mirror. Let's say you got a tall box in your back seat or something. If you're blocking it, having the camera there allows you to still see out the rear end. So that's one little system where I think the Ford could have caught up a little bit. And to your point, because this is what I'm noticing, is that at this price point, and, I, and this is a really getting your head around it, um, you're going to notice the little things in mm. a truck like this. You're totally. not going to notice the big things because you expect to have those at over a hundred grand. Right. So what you're going to start noticing is the little things. And right off the bat, when I got in here, and when I mean little things, I mean creature comforts, okay? The fact that Ford gives you four cup holder positions with a sliding plate so you can either have two or four. You don't find that in the GM. The Ford mm -hmm. still gives you a 12 volt plug-in, whereas the GM has now gone away from that. You either got a 110 or just USB. USB. You know, they're continuing to give you these sort of little things. And just in all points, as you mentioned, for instance, earlier uh, with the drive position, the drive position here not only sets your seat, but it will change the angle of your steering wheel. Right. Whereas I know over in my truck, it's still manual. Right, and that's it, right? So the steering column here is powered. I have adjustable pedals, which are powered. Of course, the mirrors are powered. So when you hit the preset, it adjusts all of that stuff. The GM can't do that because the steering column is not powered and these pedals are not adjustable at all. So yeah, in that way, I think the Ford is superior. And again, talking about creature comforts, I think the seats in the Ford are a clear step ahead of the GM. These seats are so supportive, so adjustable. A lot of people actually on the internet especially really hate on General Motors seats. I don't hate them. I don't feel very really strongly negatively about them. They're just kind of okay. Whereas these ones are noticeably good. You get in and you just feel that support. And, and that's something that over a short drive might not present itself, but over a long drive across the country, you'll definitely notice. So yeah, overall comfort I, I will give to the Ford 2 based on the seats. So looking at some more of those features and some of the differences, we do have a head-up display here in the Ford. We do have that in the GM as well. Uh, in the Ford, I do like it. It's nice and clear. One important thing for me, someone who's a little taller, I always needed to adjust down low enough 
and here in the Ford it absolutely does that. My only knock against the Ford as compared to the GM is here I have to go into my screens to adjust the information I get off the HUD, whereas in the GM there is a specific bank of buttons that you go to and I like having those hard buttons which are just always ready to change it. So I like the controls on the head-up display a little more in the GMC, but overall I just like that we have a head-up display. Now another thing the Ford does, which the GM doesn't, and again we're going back and forth here, um, the Ford has a lane keep assist system. On General Motors you do have adaptive cruise control, but here the Ford is actually going to find the lanes for me and then steer me back into the center of the lane. Now I will say in my experience the system works well, and now this is the subjective part, I always turn it off. I don't like the feeling of the vehicle wanting to drive mostly in a different part of the lane than I do. Generally, it just doesn't want to be exactly where you want to be, so you end up feeling like it's fighting against you. I don't like any of these systems, so I just shut them off, but you do have to say and admit that the Ford has it and the GM doesn't. And again, over a long, long drive on the highway, yeah, sometimes it is nice to have because you have that little extra peace of mind of knowing that if I do slip for a second, if I do stop paying attention for just a second, it'll uh, pull me back to where it wants me to be. So in terms of the driver assistance systems, yeah, the Ford has a bit of an edge there too. Now we discussed the power and getting going is very important but arguably stopping is more important, especially when you're hauling a load. So the first thing I'll mention is here on the Super Duty, and this was new when the Super Duty was updated, it has an exhaust brake, but it also has an automatic setting. That was added, and that's something that Ram always had, and now Ford has it too. And the idea behind the auto setting is I can lift off the gas like I just did, and you don't feel any engine braking, but then as I apply the brake, you can hear it start to come on and help me. And that wasn't a very aggressive brake. Let me get back up to speed and I'll hit it just a little bit harder just so we can get a good sense for uh, the stopping power here in this truck around the corner. And here comes a brake. Oh man, and that feels really solid. That was on auto. You felt the engine braking kick in basically right away. I'm also in tow haul mode, so they had a pretty aggressive downshift there too. Um, yeah, you know what, it's not a massive trailer, but with this block at the back, the brakes feel good. And now folks, here we are in the GMC, coming around the same corner we did in the Ford, and accelerate. Oh man. And there's 80, and there's 100 kilometers an hour. So this is, it's an interesting kind of conversation to have, Dad, because the Ford felt more powerful. Clearly, it got up to speed a little bit quicker, and I didn't feel like I had to put my foot as far into it to get to that power. So that's maybe obvious. It's got more on paper, and it feels like more in the real world, even hauling 2,000 pounds. However, I think these days the conversation has evolved to this truck has 975 pound-feet of torque. Compared to the HDs of a decade ago, the power has almost doubled, if not more in some cases. So how much is enough? How much is too much? Are we fully into the era of just absolute overkill? Because this accelerated plenty quickly to merge onto any highway, any interstate without a second thought. So I guess, yeah, more power is always good. I did like feeling it in the Ford. There is a feeling of confidence that comes along with more power. But when does it end? Do you, do you have any sense for, you know, are we at the ceiling or are these things just gonna keep going because people keep asking for more? It'll never end. And somebody will always want more. That is just the way it works. Fair enough, and, and now in this comparison, we can also say between these two trucks, Ford is offering you more power for slightly less money. Not a big difference, but you know, three, four thousand dollars. You do have to admit that in that way, the powertrain war goes to the Ford, but it is a slim margin. I do not want to sit here and feel like I'm knocking this truck because the power here is also incredible, nice and smooth, nice and quiet. So yeah, both are great powertrains, but the Ford has the edge. It's worth mentioning, however, you've got it right. Is it enough? Is it actually more than enough? 
in both trucks. Yeah. So we're fine there. But and without trying to be a smart ass about it, there's always the guy who's got to have the most. Yeah, a bigger and number. You know what? The customer is always right. It's your money. And Ford realize Ford of all people realizes that they've got a customer base who will <laughs> pony up the dollars for bragging rights. Sure. And that's at this point, that's all that is. Sure. Because it's not like you need it. Yeah. So but then again, you know, this is who we are. This is North America. And, you know, more is better. Yeah. And in fairness to Ford, of course, we have the high output, but they also have a regular output diesel as well. So you don't have to go up to those crazy power numbers. And GM doesn't do that, right? This diesel only comes in one flavor. So there's also a difference there in just how they approach the market. But overall, power-wise, Edge goes to Ford. So the other thing that is immediately noticeable is just like the Ford, this truck rides better with the 2,000 pounds in the back. It's just a little bit smoother, takes the harshness out of the bumps. I will say though that the Chev, or I keep calling it a Chev, this is a GMC we're in, sorry GM, the GMC here, it does still feel a hair stiffer than the Ford. I'm getting more feedback up through the body. I just feel like, again, it's not chattery at all, but I feel more of those bumps. Part of that could be the wheelbase. We do have a shorter wheelbase here and the Ford has the long bed, but I just think of even the three HDs, I can make this statement, the GMs are the stiffest. They do ride the stiffest by just a small margin. And again, I think dad can speak to it. He has a 3500 Chevy that's here on the channel quite a bit and he just got back from a big road trip. So again, do you have a feeling on the, the suspension? feeling over a long period of time. Now you nailed it. The GMs in general are a stiffer ride. Again, it's incremental um, as compared, for instance, with the Ram, particularly with the 2500 that's got coil spring suspension, much better ride. Uh, the Ford is just across the board, in my opinion, a little bit softer, mm -hmm. uh, which probably also plays into the, uh, the dilemma over, or I should say the debate, over the seats. Yeah, and that's one we can get into because yeah, jumping in here, the seats are just not as comfortable. They're stiffer, they're harder, they're flatter. They are. And 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 to me, it's not a deal breaker. Some people we've read comments where they won't buy a GM for the seats. Yeah, I'm not it's in that funny. Camp. I, I just did two thousand miles on those seats and yeah, I'll tell you, they're a little bit stiffer, but at any point was I like, God, I gotta sell this truck? No. So, you know, that's very individual. But the Ford does have a cushier seat. So if you're more of the lazy boy guy the Ford will be more to your taste. Fair enough. So now I think, because we already mentioned a lot of things in the Ford, you know, that that truck had, that this truck didn't and vice versa. I want to sort of go back to that. What features are here in the GMC that weren't in the Ford? And I'll tell you the first one that jumps out at me is four wheel drive auto. We have an auto setting here in the GM, which means it'll be two wheel drive, it'll run in rear wheel drive, but then if it does send slip, it will adjust into four wheel drive automatically. And, and I do actually think that's a pretty big deal, especially for someone somewhere like here in Ontario, where we have slick, wet roads for almost half of the year. It's important that you just don't have to think about it. You put it in auto, you never think, and then one day, if you do get in a tricky situation, the truck will do it for you. So I, that is one area where I think GM has an edge because I know Ram and Ford don't have that in the HDs. No, and it's, it, listen, it's a good feature. It just happened to us now. I was pulling the Ford out of the parking lot yeah. and it's in two wheel drive and it's, it's real slushy and it just starts spinning. And it's like, okay, I come to a stop, put the brake on, put it in four high, wait for it to shift. You know, the whole enterprise is like 15, 20 seconds, fine. Now it's in four high, get out of the parking lot. If you got an auto setting, it does it automatically. Yep. So yeah, they're in, it's one of those little things that can be a big thing. Yep. And then I also mentioned this in the Ford, but we'll drive it home. The rear camera mirror that's here in the GMC, it's not over there. You can adjust the brightness. You can even go up and down. And then the funniest one, Dad, is you can zoom in. So you can really see what people are doing in their cars behind you when you're sitting at a stoplight. Yeah, you watch them picking their noses. <laughs> yeah. But I already said it, I'll say it again. I do think in some cases that's actually a lot smarter because, yeah, if you can't see out your back window and this can, well, then that's safer. And maybe the best feature of all still, you can just shut it off. If you do that, it becomes a regular mirror again. So if you don't like it, you don't have to deal with it. But it's nice to know that it is there. So another difference, 
Sunroofs, Dad, I know you're not a sunroof fan. Here in the GMC, we just have the little sunroof. The Ford has a massive panoramic sunroof. It's huge, it's like a greenhouse in there. So if you're into the sunroofs, uh, that's definitely a point in the Ford's favor as well. So now we'll come back to another feature we can test and that is the exhaust brake. So here on the GMC, it's just on or off. There is no auto setting, which means unlike the Ford, if I just simply lift off here, you can feel the exhaust brake come on. And then once you brake, it seems to come on heavier, but yes, it comes on right away. Although I will say it's not that strong feeling, but now let me get back up to speed and we'll do a bit of an emergency brake to feel the brakes. Ready? Here we go. And stopping. Okay, so I'll tell you from the driver's seat, there was a difference. The GMC didn't stop as authoritatively as the Super Duty did. I just felt like the grabbers on the Ford grabbed harder than this truck did. How did it feel over there? Any difference? I can say it's really just from my experience with my 3500 right now is that I've been noticing I got to dig deeper. Mm. The brakes are there, but somehow it's like the travel of the pedal. It's just you got to dig deeper yeah. to get to, to get as much braking out of it as once again, my Ram was because that's what I have the most experience with. Sure. Yeah, no, that's what I just felt here too. Between the Super Duty and this truck immediately, yeah, like for sure, when I dig into that pedal, it's there. But I definitely had to put more force into it. And and I think that just equals a little less confidence. You just, when you don't have to push that hard and you really feel it grab, it makes you confident that you're gonna stop every time. So in that, in that area, yeah, it's a tick to the Ford as well. It should also be noted that GM, the way they set up their exhaust brake, it really does work in tandem with the gear Mm. So you'll notice that as you're braking and the transmission is gearing down, the exhaust brake really sort of blips harder on the downshifts. So you notice it particularly when you got the trailer. Sure. Now we have fully digital gauge clusters in both of these trucks. That's pretty much par for the course on a truck this expensive. But I will say the GM offers more customizability. I am able to change more of the information in more different areas. There's also just four overall layout changes, whereas the Ford doesn't allow you to change the way the gauges look. So the, yeah, the GM just offers more information and uh, you can really get everything you could ever imagine out of it. Actually, Dad, it's even silly enough that you can set the info on the left to be the same as the info on the right. I'm even surprised it allows you to do that. But it kind of just drives the point home that GM allows you to set this gauge cluster up exactly as you want it. Well, it's it's personalization. Of course, that's always been a big deal in trucks, period. Yeah. Uh, any aftermarket company will tell you. I mean, they're making a fortune because guys want to set their trucks up to be very personalized. Yeah. Well, now the manufacturers have taken that one step farther and let you do that inside the truck too with things like your gauge cluster and I'm all for that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's actually, it's obviously one of the advantages of going all digital is you can have those different layouts. You can have more fun with it, change them up more rather than just being limited when you have a physical gauge, right? Yep. So yeah, in that way, I'll give the edge to the GMC. Not a huge difference, but the difference is definitely there. So we have been diving into those little details and really trying to compare feature to feature, but let's just zoom out a little bit, get super subjective, and, and just tell me your feeling on the interiors next to each other. Um, I'll just say that the GMC is quite nice, but I don't see it as being sort of a level above the Ford. I think they're almost on the same level. I think they are on the same level. Um, they are a bit different though. This uses more of the wood, more of the natural tones. The Ford feels a little bit more, I don't know, pinstripe suit, where this feels more like old library with lots of mahogany and leather bound <laughs> books. I don't know if you get that feeling, but anyways, my point is the level of luxury feels right there with each other. Well, I think you just pigeonholed me because Yes, they're both nice, but if you were to say, Howard, which one do you want to buy? I'd opt for the GMC. This, it, it, one word always pops into my head with the Denali, it's elegant. Mm. And that's, yeah, that's what this interior says to me. I agree with you there. The, the etching in the wood is a really nice touch too. That really kind of draws your eyes and it, it does look good. Um, but again, this truck is a little bit more expensive. So is it worth three grand just for the look of the interior? Well, I guess we're going to have to leave that up to you guys to decide uh, because it is just, yeah, it's totally subjective. Without a doubt. 
Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this video. Now, I do think one of the general statements I can make, if you're buying either one of these two to haul payload, tow a trailer, you're not gonna be disappointed in the way they work. However, at this price point, when we're talking about luxury trucks, those little details matter, and quite frankly, the Ford F-250 just does those little details better. It offers more for the money, a little bit more value, and then just more things that are automatic that go ahead and take care of themselves, and that equals more luxury for the driver. So yes, in this one, I would absolutely lay my money down on an F-250 Limited over a Sierra Denali Ultimate. But now I need to hear from you, so please go down into the comments, let me know which one of these two trucks looks better to you. And as always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hey, hit join and become a member of the Truck King channel. We do try to upload some members only videos for those folks, so make sure you check that out and then come right back here to see what we're testing next. See ya.